Hello fellow 3D enthusiast, my name is Ian, and today I wanted to show you real quick a good technique for fusing objects together when you're sculpting. This is a really valuable technique to learn, because sometimes when you're sculpting you want a part that's repeating, like all of these spikes here, but you don't want to take the time to go in and sculpt them all to this giant object individually. So I've just sculpted this quick object here, so what I'm going to do is just show you how you can put these two objects here together and make them look like they're seamlessly fused together, like this one here. Alright, so I'm working on this guy here, as you can see, and I just want this spike to be part of this mesh here, and I want it to be pretty seamless here. So that's what we're trying to do. Let's see how we can do that with booleans. I'm going to take these two objects and kind of move them to their own collection. And we can just hide this collection so we can just focus on these two objects here. It's pretty easy to set up a Boolean operation, but it takes a second to clean it up. We're just going to select the main object that we want to be like the big part. And then go modifier and Boolean modifier. I'm going to set this to be union and just select the dropper tool here and select that object there. Now it looks a little strange up here. That's just because the original object is still there. I'm going to hide that with H, and now we've got our object. So I'm going to apply this modifier, and here is where we run into a few little problems. If we look here in x-ray mode, you can see there's the tip of the iceberg, but then underneath it we have this giant part inside the mesh that's still here, and if we tried to start sculpting over this, it'd just come up with all sorts of problems. So what I'm going to do real quick, and this doesn't take a whole lot of work, is we go into edit mode, and you can see this is just a mess. I've been using dynamic topology on it, but that's alright. If we go into the select menu, and go select by trait, and then hit non-manifold, you can see we've got this line around here. And if we go to vertice select mode, it's still kind of crazy looking, but it's basically just this seam all the way around the edge. And the cool thing with this is, if we hit hide with H, we can actually see we've got this part here, and if we hit L with our mouse over it, we can just select the whole thing. We can grab it, move it around, and we can hit X and delete vertices. And that just gets it right out of our way. And what's this? Underneath we see the other edge of the original sculpt. So we can just hit L once again, select all that, X, vertices. And now we've got everything out of here that we don't want. And if we hit Alt H, that brings back our ring of vertices and things are back in shape. Now of course these used to be two different objects so we might want to hit tab and go into sculpt mode enable our dynamic topology and then just work on the seam here we can just help to fuse these together if we just work on these shapes a little bit make them a little bit more streamlined. Cool! Now that looks like it actually might belong there. Now if you found this quick tip useful, and you'd like to see more tutorials like it, there's a link in the description that says free hydraulic kit bash elements, and when you click that link, it'll add you to my email list. I'll make sure the first thing I send you are a pack of hydraulic kit bash elements made for Blender users like yourself, and these will just give you a bit of a jump start when you're working on mechanical projects. The other thing you should be aware of when you're on this list is that every week whenever I post a tutorial, I just mail out to that list so you can keep up to date on tutorials. But other than that, I hope you have an excellent day. And cheers!